1886, North Dakota, midnight, exterior, and you and the lads are in a whole mess of trouble. The shades are on your tail after a job you pulled went south and you need to split. But here's the catch. All that early spring ice melts flooded the area and there's only one boat in town. The plan? Steal the boat, head for the border, and then do some more crimes after we get to Canada. Probably, I, I don't know, I haven't thought that far ahead yet. But we can't exactly waltz up and just take the damn thing. That's exactly what we're going to do. Surely the cops will notice if we steal the only ship for a hundred miles. Of course, but who cares? We'll be on the only ship for a hundred miles. My god, Captain Crime Stewart, you're a genius. Not so fast, Batman Ne'er-Do-Well. I haven't even gotten to the best part. The heist already happened. Yeah! It was the perfect crime. Or at least it would have been if not for one small detail. Unbeknownst to you and the boys, you just stole a ship from the bull fucking moose. Old Theodore Roosevelt is, how do you say, perturbed to discover his mighty vessel has been stolen. Okay, look, cards on the table, it wasn't actually like a pirate ship, Obviously, it was more of a, a hunting boat, but, like, in my heart it was a pirate ship. So, he marches down to the local sheriff's office, and he goes, Hey, uh, just a heads up, some guy stole my boat, and I need to take one of yours so that I can track them down and chop their bodies off. Uh, sure, but we won't be able to get a boat to this part of the county for another week and a half at least. Too long, do it myself. Well, hang on, now, you can't do that. You need to hold some sort of position of authority, like a, like a sheriff or a deputy or... Look at me! I am the deputy now. Yeah, okay. Freshly deputized and horny for revenge, Roosevelt set off on his pirate hunting adventure, but quickly encounters his first obstacle. A distinct lack of boat. Oh yeah, forgot about that. After taking a moment to consider his options, Theodore decides his best course of action is to start cutting down trees and just fucking build a new one. He spends three days building something that's pretty much a boat, and hops in to begin his valiant quest, a mere 83 hours behind his bounty. Just for those of you who weren't paying attention, the man has set off in a homemade raft during freezing temperatures on a flooded river that is 50% whitewater rapids and 50% ice to chase renowned armed criminals who stole a boat that was worth $30. Now, Roosevelt is an expert hunter, so tracking down the seafaring scallywags isn't much of an issue. What is much of an issue are the several days of massive hail and thunderstorms just kicking the shit out of them. Roosevelt is Fought. Not only is he so far behind the pirates at this stage that his chances of catching them are approximately fuck all, but he also didn't pack enough food rations to account for the storms, and now he's probably definitely going to starve to death. But luckily for Theodore Roosevelt, he's Theodore fucking Roosevelt, and instead of doing the rational thing of dying or not chasing pirates through a thunderstorm on a boat you built by yourself, he decides to lace up his boots, sharpen up his gun, and go hunting for mountain lions. Now, he didn't find any, and he settled on some pheasants instead. But don't let that distract you from the fact that when faced with certain death, Theodore Roosevelt's first instinct is to find and kill the nearest apex predator. And while the hunt for mountain lions may have been unsuccessful, the hunt for pirates was not. You see, turns out the boat thieves had decided to not risk sailing through the icy overflooded badlands during the worst storm of the last two decades like some kind of revenge-driven meat terminator, and instead made a merry little pirate camp for themselves to wait it out. Okay, look, cards on the table, they weren't actually pirates, so much as just kind of miscellaneous criminals who happened to steal a boat, but, like... In my heart, they were pirates. What happened next, I will let Roosevelt describe in his own words. When I got within 20 or so yards, I straightened up from behind the bank, covering them with my cocked rifle, while I shouted to them to hold up their hands, an order that in such a case, in the West, a man is not apt to disregard if he thinks the giver is in earnest. Or, in the Queen's English, Yes, you fucking bitch, move! And I'll execute! 
shoot every motherfucking last one of you! The pirates turn and ready their weapons, only to witness the godly 7 foot 10, 900 pound slab of all American muscles standing before them, and immediately surrender. Now, young Teddy would be well within his rights to just shoot the fuckers dead on the spot and be done with it. But, considering his newly earned title of deputy, he thought it would be funnier to deliver the men to a sheriff, so that they could all receive a fair trial. Because that's just the kind of upstanding American citizen he was. And also he'd get a massive fuck off paycheck. So he loads the men back onto the ship and... Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Heading downstream under such conditions fucking sucked. So trying to head back upstream under those same conditions, fuck that. His only other option would be to deliver the pirates to the next town over. But that was over 40 hours away. By foot. Which... Ugh. But it is also marginally better than definitely drowning. So he just fucking... does. That. He sets off to single-handedly escort three dangerous criminals across the most treacherous parts of the Badlands through blistering storms, vicious predators, and savage Indians. Sorry, you're not supposed to call them Indians anymore. Uh, uh, Inuits, I mean. Fun fact, handcuffs tend to cut off circulation to the hands. Not much of an issue if you're only in them for two and a half incredibly sexy minutes. But over the course of 40 hours in sub-zero temperatures, well that is just a recipe for frostbite, and also dying of frostbite. And while dead men tell no tales, they also pay no bills, so we couldn't risk tying them up at all. Thankfully, ya boy Roosevelt had a clever workaround. You see, rather than using handcuffs or ropes to keep his hostages from escaping and or murdering him, old Teddy decided to instead remain, and I quote, ever vigilant throughout the journey. Okay, look, cards on the table. He didn't actually travel halfway across the county with three unbound assailants over the course of like two days without sleeping. But like... Psych, that one's real. 43 hours later, he kicks open the door to the sheriff's office, throws the lads in jail, gets 50 beans for the trouble, probably bangs the sheriff's wife, retrieves his boat, and later receives a letter from the pirate captain thanking him for being such a gentleman. I'm not really sure what the moral of the story is, but I guess if you're going to steal a boat from Theodore Roosevelt, then fucking don't. Instead. Anyways, that's the video. Bye.